Hi, right, welcome to Fiddly Stitch Tutorials. We're going to be talking about how you <clears throat> create um, a preset or um, basically you're, you're going to save this. So we're going to call it preset. You're going to save a preset for splicing images like this one so that you can print sections or sections of the image. Okay, so well, we've gone to our, our little toolbox over here and we've selected the box, a square box, draw a rectangle, and we've created the rectangle. Oops, sorry, folks. Anyways, we've created the rectangle. And the rectangle is now everybody has, you know, things that they work with. Me, I work with a regular size printer. Um, it only takes up to eight and a half by 11. So I have to create the page size that I work with. If your page is 13 by 19, then you can create these boxes for 13 by 19. Um, you can adjust, once you create a box, it doesn't matter how you create it. Once you adjust it, you can always go up here to the width and the height and type in whatever number you want. So if yours was 13, 13, press enter, it creates a 13 down here, see? So what we needed um, to be working with is an eight, eight and a half by 11. So that's why we created that size for us, you know? Okay, so to create what I need is something that will fit this. Now, I've already done this, so I'm, I'm just recreating it to be able to show you all out here on a video. Um, I know that I need four pages to be able to do this. So we're going we're gonna to select this image, uh, right click, then we're going to duplicate, and then we're going to let that go, deselect, and then select again. And duplicate one more time and now we have our four boxes okay I'm gonna get those boxes as close as we can where we could to the naked eye it looks like they might be close um, they're still gonna be way off but we're, we're, we're gonna get them in the right neighborhood so that doesn't look too bad I know that uh, we need to level these out and to do that I use a transform box so that transform box has a center to cutting mat, center two objects to the center of each other. Um, and then you can align. So you're going to align it to the edge, align it to this edge. You're going to align it in the middle. Then you're going to, there's another, you know, more, more, more um, ways that you can align to the top, to the bottom, to the middle this way. What we need right now <clears throat> is for these two boxes to align up to the top. That way those two are level. Then we're going to have these two top boxes align to the bottom. So we know that those two are level. Then again, with this one, we're going to align it to the inside. With this one, we're going to align it to the inside right here. Okay, so... Now that we have those, and they should all four be relatively in the same area. We still have a gap between the top and the bottom and each side. But we're going to we're gonna adjust that. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to move this out of the way. So you can see. Um, and we're just going to use our up arrow keys and slide that up until it's well it looks like it's not too bad um, I know they're still way off we're gonna select these two and we're gonna use our arrow side and right there doesn't look too bad okay so we'll zoom out of here a little bit so we can recenter we're gonna touch this a uh, little it almost looks like a little face with a plus and that will actually bring a little magnifying glass out. That magnifying glass, wherever you center it, wherever you touch it at, that creates the center of the screen. <clears throat> Move this out of the way a little bit. We're going to zoom in a little more so you can see. You see how far everything is off? 
don't know if you can see that, but it's off. Um, what we need to do is bring this over a little bit more, bring it in. And that's it right there. Perfect. I think that's going to work. And then select the bottom two or the top two and slide it into the opposite two. And it, it, honestly, what you're really trying to do is create a, a, just a single thin line here and a single thin line here. You might have to play around with it a little bit because this is, this is where the magic will happen. If you can't line those up, then you won't get to ever break your image apart. It just won't work. So we're going to select that little drawing tool again. We're going to create a circle. And then go back to the arrow key. We're going to get that out of the way. We're going to color this circle. Um, we're going to color it black. Just so we can see. Okay. And then we're going <clears> to... <throat> we need this pre-cut to go on that top side. So <clears throat> this black actually seems to be covering the lines. We're going to right click. Um, and send that to the back of the layer. See how the red lines show up now? Okay, now we're going to try to put that in the center, kind of. And then I don't group these boxes together. I leave them separate. It, I have had, when you group them, it changes the, the way that they function when they cut. So we want each one to cut its own individual box. And you'll know because this red line here and this red line here within the circle will stay if the lines are right it you'll see that little plus sign in there so we're going to select all of them we're going to go uh, to our modify box and we're going to select crop and boom you see how you get this little red line and a little red line that's it that's how you do that it has made four separate pieces and if you if these were placed in your printing uh, area you could print each one um, and that's how you get your four separate pieces for this image it was four separate pieces so we know that box is going to work the lines are perfect so we just backed out of it a little bit so we can put the image in there so you can actually see how this works um, we're going to go here and we don't want to do it when you're doing sublimation, you don't want this crosshair to actually be in the white. You won't know where to cut your paper. And you have to be able to line your paper up into a cutter. Um, so that the image lines up just right. You have a, you have a solid way to, to really line it up. So you need at least at the top. In the middle is okay if it's a little blank, but you need the other edge somewhere to have that color. So, we're going to put the color, or the crosshairs, I mean, excuse me. We're going to put the crosshairs where there's color, so all four corners have color. And most of the way up, each page has color. You know, there's, there's different ways to line it up that way. That way you can tell if it's a little crooked, a little off. Um, I don't know that I like this being right here right on the edge of the s so we're going to move this over just a little bit i don't okay that's not too bad i don't want just right on the edge of a line i want it to be at least in the middle of something so that for the letters so that i can see it i don't want it in the middle of a boot because sometimes it's hard to line that up so I think we got it pretty good here. I'm going to zoom out. Let's, uh, let's get our little modify box back up. And then we're going to select all this. So again, all four boxes plus the image. And we're going to touch crop. Now every time I do this, I get these snowflakes they turn white I the reason I have no idea 
um, but it's not that hard to fix. You know, you can always go in, touch each one, color it blue. You, oh, it did. It, it cropped it right there. That's why that's... Okay, let's just select them all, color it blue. Select all this, color it blue. Blue. Okay, so you know you can recolor them. Um, you get the idea. We might have a little problem with this snowflake right here. So let, let's try it out and see what we can come up with. If, if it's too hard, we'll back out and do it again. Okay, so if you select here, you see how it wants to highlight two sides? So we know we're right in the middle, real close. Um, we could probably go over just a little bit more. No, no, no. Okay, we're going to come back here. And just keep going down. And you see how we're picking up other pieces? We don't want that. We want to keep it in the same range of the box. So we know that we're selecting the right pieces. Okay, we've gotten all of those, I think. We're going to group all that together. Once you get one, it's it's pretty easy to start getting the rest of them. <clears throat> and you can grab it this way and select it all right there. And then you see how it's highlighted both sides? We don't really want that. So we're going to push the shift key and left click on this and that'll unselect it. And then you can... Let go of the shift key, right or left click, or right click, and then group it. And now we have all that selected. And then just keep proceeding to do the rest of them. Um, got all that. Got need to get rid of that. And then group it. And then we pretty much got it all here. So and get rid of that and group it again and that's it people that's how the magic happens and that's it there's uh four separate images you would print each image up um and then that would be a whole different video of how you line this up and print it to print print it to a garment this is for sublimation so You'd have to have your printer set up. You'd want to mirror this image, the total image, so that each one comes out backwards, so that when you lay it down, it reads the right way. If it's just a, the person, it doesn't matter. You're there. Nobody's ever going to know. But when you have letters, it changes everything. They have to print out the right way, and I've seen a lot of mistakes where people don't mirror the image and the letters come out backwards when they actually press it on a shirt so beware of that i hope this uh, little tutorial was educational and i hope you like share uh, subscribe share the link with everybody that you can find that does sublimation that you know has some questions I'd, i'll be doing more videos so feel free to drop a message to me um, you can reach us at Fiddly Stitch on Facebook um, and leave us a message. We'll reply. I uh, sure appreciate it.